Thank you all for joining. We'll give it just another minute or so for others to arrive. Thank you for joining. This webinar is brought to you by Innovos and co-hosted by Unispace Health. My name is Brendan Joyce, Principal with Unispace Health. I'll hand over to Taut Vitas, who is our Head of Research and Development in the UK. Well, thanks Brendan and thanks for, um, yeah, for joining us. So welcome everybody. Uh, this, today I'm joined by Rick Fentiman, our Global Manager, Director at Innovos, and Ian Moran, our Robotic Disinfection Category Manager. So today we're going to be talking more about the understanding of UVC technology. Uh, we'll talk about UVC technology in hospitals. We'll introduce our new product, which is UltraV Connect, and we'll explain how we work with hospitals and touch on some of the efficacy results. So Inimos is a specialist business focused on the development of technologies and services to reduce the risk of patients acquiring infection in clinical environments. And Brendan, do you want Unispace to- Health. Yeah, Unispace Health is a global supply chain headquartered here in Australia and we provide powerful and safer business continuity solutions and connecting um, organisations globally with the products that we, we bring. Yes, and our, our aim is to enable care environments to deliver better care faster. So when we work with our customers, we tend to follow this three-step approach, which is understand. So we try and understand the, the needs of the customer so that we can design the solutions that we can validate. And then we, we deliver the results that we can product, product manage. And we found this, this approach um, really beneficial both for us to understand the infection needs and then obviously design solutions to work for, for our customers. And we've implemented our technologies across numerous of sites um, and this approach works really well. So I'm gonna hand over to Rick to talk about these four vectors of transmission. Thanks, Thomas. Um, so the, the background of the four vectors of transmission is really born from our desire to simplify um, our approach to understanding how infections, how patients acquire infection in hospital. And our core understanding is that if a patient acquires an infection in hospital, they will have acquired it from one of these four main vectors. There are other vectors, but these are the four main vectors of transmission of infection in, in hospital. And it's something that we spend a lot of time working on with our customers to understand, to make sure this is an understandable concept and make sure that it's easily communicate, communicate easily with, with um, the stakeholders. So the, the four main vectors we've identified are surfaces, water, people, and air. So if a patient was to come into, in, into hospital with no known infection, and during their journey or their stay in hospital, they acquire an infection, they would have acquired it from a surface. So they would have come in contact with a surface that had contamination. They would have come in contact with water that's contaminated, whether that was naturally occurring contamination in the, in the, in the fresh water or splash back from drains or, or wastewater. Um, they would have come in contact with a person who, who, who transferred some form of contamination to them um, or from the air. So whether it was in the form of an aerosol or in the form of some other airborne pathogen. So this is a, it's a simple ma matrix we use and we think that any effective infection prevention and control strategy must have elements that touch all four of these, ve these vectors. And I think it's one of our core beliefs as a business is that we should um, enlarge our scope to, to, to encompass these four vectors and, and, and give us our uh, solutions that really work for our customers on, on all, all, all those levels. Thanks Rick and I'll, I'm going to talk a bit more about the understanding of UVC light. So UVC light um, is electromagnetic radiation with a shorter wavelength than the visible light and although there's many many you know technologies out there that use UVC light what we focus on is the measurement and kind of dose measurement of UVC light at the point of the decontamination. And our technology employs UVC light, but we use these spectrums which are monitoring UVC light uh, at the point of decontamination. And that delivers you the, the dose of UVC light that you need on that surface. And we validate that process by sending a report to your inbox to say that the process was successful. So we use UVC light, um, we, 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 know, we, we know what's the best way of deploying it, and we use these spectrums to make sure that every single process uh, is, is successful. So I'll hand, uh, I'll hand back to, to Rick to talk about UVC technology in hospitals. 
Thanks, Tata. So I think the UVC light has been a, a technology that we've seen really come to the fore, um, especially since the, 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 the recent pandemic or during the recent pandemic, we've seen UVC light deployed in many different ways. And I think the main, it's been proven as an effective technology to kill vegetative bacteria, um, particularly effective on vegetative bacteria. It, it's, it's less effective in some other, some other organisms, but I think that's, that's really where we come in, in in designing a system where we can calibrate and measure the UVC light exposure. And that becomes critical to knowing if your, if your UVC light technology is, is effective. I think what Towers has touched on is the most important point with UVC light. There's no doubt about the efficacy of the, of the of the method or it's of the technology or the, or the mode of action wherewith it kills microorganisms. What is, what is always um, important really is, is, is how do we validate and how do we measure that we've been effective at, at deploying that technology. And I suppose that's really <clears throat> the, the role of UVC light in, in conjunction with manual cleaning methods gives us a level of assurance and a level of um, confidence around our cleaning practices that we wouldn't get just from using manual, manual cleaning practices. So with manual cleaning practices, we know the, the, um, the, 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 the limit of the efficacy of a manual cleaning process is the limit of the, um, of the person deploying it and, and the person at the, end, at the end of the cloth, as we say. And so it's interesting to, um, to look at the variation in, in, cleaning, in, in efficacy from cleaning manual cleaning practices. And that's where Ultra-V um, Connect and Ultra-V, the mobile system, um, has really come into its own. We work with around 39 of the acute trusts in the, UK, in, the, in the UK. We've got a number of hospitals in Australia using UVC light in, in various ways. Um, I think namely Princess Alexandra in, in, in Queensland have done some excellent work there with, with the Ultra-V mobile. And I'm sure we'll, we'll, we'll have a case study at some point to share with you all on, on, from their experience. Um, I think that's about it from me, Tavis, on that point. Good, and I'd like Ian to introduce the, the fixed um, Ultra-V Connect system. Yeah, thanks all for, for the good introduction to the technology that we're utilising. And that really leads us to how we've come up with this solution of a, a fixed UVC device. So it, it was born out of a, a question actually, which came from a customer. So they were already utilizing our mobile UVC technology, but that has its limitations in terms of having to be moved around the hospital and you know, brought to the space that requires the decontamination. So that led to this brilliant idea of actually having a fixed UVC device, utilizing exactly the same technology, but actually fixed within the space. So what that, provides is the ability to provide rapid decontamination. So there's a, there's a monitor fixed outside the room and you can run a cycle as soon as, as, soon as you finish the, with the patient in the space, you can actually run a decontamination cycle to, to, to remove contamination in that space. And what we also have is optimized decontamination cycles. So within the environment, we can identify the key areas of risk and run shorter and quicker decontamination cycles that specifically target that. Um, it's validated decontamination at the touch of a button. So when we set the systems up and when we design them initially, we're actually calibrating them to the requirements of the room. So you have the confidence that when you run that process, you're getting a calibrated decontamination process in that space. Um, another key element on here is that we have these motion sensors. So a concern around UVC light is the, the risks associated with it to, to humans. So we've, we've really gone above and beyond on providing safety for, for users, and that includes these motion sensors that are pictured here. Um, another key element that we wanted to include and wanted to make sure that we had the ability to do was to run multiples of units for larger spaces. So for instance, that could include emergency depart departments and theatres, currently looking at a very interesting project here in the UK with deploying them in a, in a, in a new state-of-the-art theatre block. So multiple units, and in, interestingly, that project actually includes the associated anaesthetic rooms and prep rooms that go with the theatre. So when you leave that theatre space and you run a decontamination, you know that the entire space that's associated with the procedure that's taken place has been decontaminated. Um, it's run by a single user process from outside the space. Um, and one thing that's is really key on this is it has a patent pending, which really is a key differentiator for this product in that it, we have a patent pending around the 
calibrated process. So really excited to bring this, this new technology into this, uh, is, is an existing technology into a, a new fixed application. And I think it could be a game changer for us. So I think that's all I have to say if we could move on. Yeah, I just wanted to say that I'm really pleased to see and that, you know, this understand, design, deliver approach was definitely taken here to design this, this Ultra V Connect and how, how you were able to employ all the best features from the mobile Ultra V system and, and, and deploy that into fixed, fixed, fixed product that, um, yeah, is, is really good. So, yeah, so, so the, moving on, um, Rick has touched on this already in terms of our journey, but we've, designed this the system to to be able to be tailored to specific environments so it's not just a it's not just a one size fits all we specifically pick and um, understand the requirements of the space to and tailor the solution that we provide to that it's a tried and tested technology which is really important to understand because um we're utilizing all the best functions of our mobile device within this along with its own improvements so there's, there's, there's really no question about the, the um, reliability and the efficacy of the product range. And then we're delivering these tailored results so that we know that from the start, the design process has been designed to include specific processes and we actually delivering those results. Another key thing we, under, we, we took in, into consideration right from the start is that it's challenging to, to work in on installation in existing healthcare environments. So we've, we've designed the system to be as easy as possible to retrofit to existing healthcare environments. Um, equally, it's obviously very good to be utilized in, in new spaces or refurbished spaces. I think we could move on. And I think Rick is gonna take us through some of the typical applications in a, in a hospital environment. Thanks, Ian. So we've seen a real and in, in, in incredible uptake of, of applications for this technology, and I, we, I suppose it's sort of exceeded our expectations, which is which is always interesting. Um, so we originally the, the original requirement that, that came to our attention was from Addenbrooke's Cambridge University Hospitals. They they approached us saying that their, their real uh, um, urgency for them was their ED assessment areas, so their emergency department assessment assessment areas where. They had patients coming in, obviously emergency patients coming in um, with, with a known or an unknown risk of, of COVID or any other infection for that matter, um, being put in, in, in an assessment bay, being assessed, and then being moved into the, the main hospital or discharge, whichever the route they took. Um, and then the next patient was hard on their heels into that space. And there was a the real appetite to deploy technology to decontaminate those spaces but there was a lack of time to, to deploy it between, between um, procedures. So the... Um, the design was was originally um, kind of concept. The concept for this for this design was originally formed there um, in conjunction with with their ED team. They've been excellent in the whole design process in helping us to to make sure that this really meets the requirements of of the sort of modern acute healthcare system as we come to know it today. We know how much pressure and change it's come over in the last come on un, come under in the last few weeks. So so it's really interesting to to be part of that. Um, I think the other areas we've had um, real interest from is, is in, in theatres. So you've got theatres where traditionally there's been pressure between infected patients in a theatre list. Um, so a traditional theatre list comes under a lot of pressure when you put infected patients into it and this becomes huge demand on the end of the theatre list and then there becomes time uh, pressures on time and, and, um, and potential risk of that running over into the following day and putting patients at risk. Um, so the idea of this was to put in decontamination in inbuilt decontamination into the theatre environment so that we can decontaminate between between patients um, in, in a typical theatre list, which has sped up the theatre theatre cycle. Um, we've other got we, we've also got other environments, things like cystic fibrosis clinics, um, consulting any consulting environment to be fair, where there's a lot of high throughput patients coming in one after the other, and there's no real knowledge around their infection status. Or what infection prevention or what infection risk they they present to the to the um, to other patients. Um, so so there's been a number of areas, um, particularly where there's this high throughput, multi occupancy, um, and and time pressure. I think they're the three factors that define the the sp specific usefulness of Ultra V Connect. And I think we've seen a number of hospitals think quite creatively um, in how they apply this. We've had a 
a um, ambulance um, service who an air ambulance service who are looking at how they deploy this in their in their air ambulances so um, there's no telling really which way this will go from here we move on to the next slide thanks Talis. so just to give you some image of, of sort of how this the, the complexity of areas how we deal with that so as, as, as Ian alluded to earlier we can deal with single emitter and multiple emitter layout so what we would typically do is we would take your environment that you're trying to decontaminate we'd take an understanding we get an understanding of the clinical behaviors and practices within that environment so we want to understand what is it that we're doing in that space um, we then understand what risks there are to those patients, what are the typical infections we're trying to deal with, what are the organisms we're concerned about, and armed with that information we go off and design a, a solution to, um, to meet that. So we have a, um, a number of ways of doing it, we can do it with a single emitter um, device, which is a single emitter and a controller outside the room, or we can do it with multiple emitters. We have a, we've developed some software which helps us to, to map the room. Um, UVC light is is subject to the inverse square law. So it, it very much defines um, the distance from the light source and the surface you're trying to treat are two very important numbers we need to understand. Um, so we need to, um, so once we understand all those factors and we understand the typical layout of the equipment in that room, we then design a solution that fits that room with the controlling mechanism. So whether that's a single entry room or a double entry room, we need controllers on, controllers on every entry point to the, to the room to make sure it's safe whilst we're deploying the cycle. Um, in essence, this, what this does is gives a real life um, map, map of the space and of how we intend to, how we intend to deal with, with the um, disinfection of, of that space and, and it helps the, um, the, the, facilities, the facilities guys to, to then work through the, the mechanical and engineering requirements of that, of that space. Good, thanks Rick. Ian, would you like to touch on the, on the safety aspect of the UltraView fixed system? Thank you, Taffy. Yes, it's, it's a very good point around the safety. Um, a key a concern that is raised regularly in, in conjunction with, with UVC light is the risk posed to humans. So I've really thought through the whole process from how the system's controlled to how we can prevent any, any risk at all of people coming into accidental contact with, with UVC light. So talking through some of these points, we have this process monitor which is mounted outside the room so that it can be that the, the process can be run from outside the space which is really key we have a it's, it's controlled by a local wireless connect a network connection so there's absolutely no need whatsoever to go into the room during the process um, a key element really is is the training so only approved op operators can can use the system and we manage that through a, a system of approved operator cards to actually operate the the program. So we place a real emphasis on giving the people the correct, the people who are going to be using the technology, the correct training to, to understand the, the risks and the, the control methods. So it, once, once the, system, the process is actually running, you've got a very clear set of simple step-by-step -step instructions with a real focus on safety. So there's kind of warnings and checks all the way through, but not at the ex expense of making it easy to use. So the, all those checks have gone through by the operator and then there's actually a clear warning sign displayed until the process is complete. And then as you can see in the, in the, in the, in the image there that we've got these um, tested safety sensors which you can see all sides of the room. And that is a, whilst, we're, whilst we're designing the system at, into that particular space, we actually look at how the safety sensors are, are on mapping the space and it's a, a, a safety sensor system which we've been using on our mobile device for a long time so we're very confident in that in, in the safety procedures that we have in place around the system. Excellent thanks Ian. <clears throat> it, it always feels as if you know we definitely put the operator in control of the process and I guess uh, that process monitor outside of the room is, is, is a good proof of that so that you, you know you can literally follow the, the simple steps by steps and be in control of the process and know exactly what's happening in the room. Um, Rick, Rick, would you like to talk about the, the journey that we would take our customers on? 
Yeah, thanks. So typically we would take a, um, a specific environment, we'd understand that the needs of what, what we're trying to um, deploy inside that space, so what the clinical um, activities are there, so whether it's an ED environment and it's high throughput or whether it's a assessment area or, or what the typical equipment is in that room, whether it's a, a focus around a particular piece of equipment that we're worried about, whether it's in a, a radiology suite or, or whatever that might be. Um, we'd, we'd take that understanding right early on and it's really important to get that at early early stage of this um, and then we quickly go into a design phase so our design team can usually turn this around in a 48 hours where they will take the space they'll map it um, map that space to um, to show and the, the, the layout and the, and the um, spread of the UVC light and disinfection systems and then we go into an installation phase which is when we inst install the equipment and um, the hard the equipment will be hardwired into the environment um, and then there's the final piece, which is the validation. And the validation is the most important piece. It's something we spend a lot of time. I think there's no denying that UVC light is an effective technology. Um, our, our kind of our frustration is making sure that um, our, our frustration, I suppose, is, is, is seeing so many. Um, well, I suppose we've seen an increase of it during the COVID crisis. We've all got our own stories of, of people that have, have gone off and done something they believe is the right thing to, to make their space um, safer, make their environment safer, and really it doesn't work. So our, our, our core goal here is to make sure that when we install these, this equipment, that we've validated the cycle in that space to make sure that we can achieve the, the, the effective log reduction or, or decontamination of that space to make it safe for the next patient to, to, um, to, be, to occupy. Um, and with that validation is what will, the machine will be calibrated to. And every time it runs a cycle, it will then have that same validation support. So it's a technology that we've developed called Spectrome. And I think Spectrome is kind of the heart of what we're talking about here to make sure that when we, when we, when we decontaminate a space that it's, it's safe for the next patient to appear. Excellent, thanks Rick. Um, and I just wanted to talk more about the efficacy results. Uh, and I'm going to talk about one of the examples out of the 16 studies that we've done in the UK in, the, in some of the hospitals that successfully implemented UVC light technology. And this is specifically a study from Barnsley where they were sampling multiple touch points to show, you know, what were the results for the TVC counts before the cleaning, after the cleaning, and after the deployment of UltraV. And it's important to note the UltraV Connect uses the same UltraV spectrum technology that basically keeps the system on for as long as it has to to make sure we get the right amount of UVC light at the point of decontamination. So it's different from some of the other systems that perhaps measure reflected light or work on the assumption of we're just going to run it for 10 minutes and, and that should be enough. So there's no guesswork with the spectrum and the operator as I mentioned previously is in full control of the process because they can see you know how, how, how the process is running and how, how much light each corner is getting given that these spectrums are positioned there. So this specific study shows that even after the manual cleaning, and there's some high levels of, of, of TVC counts. So under normal conditions, you know, this is where that middle bar is where, where, you, you know, you, where you'd be readmitting your, your patients. And what we're trying to say that, you know, the hospitals are definitely, that are definitely trying to push the boundaries and create safe environments should definitely employ UVC light technology to make sure that they can put, you know, admit, readmit their patients in this third bar, which is which seen a significant reduction uh, for TVC counts with these high high touch points, and some of the other uh, studies have shown the same the same situation that although manual cleaning um, unavoidably uh, is prone to errors, as we just mentioned previously, it depends on you know how good the, the cleaning um, person is, uh, but it's not unavoidable although unintentional. So so we definitely say that you know if, when you use UVC light technology, you, you can reduce the uh, the level of contamination to uh, to these low levels. So with that, I'd like to go into the, the Q&A session of the webinar. Please use the Q&A tab to post any of the questions and I'll, um, we'll, we'll try and answer them um, now. So there, there, was, there was one, one, one question to start with. Uh, what does the reporting and validation process look like? Ian, would you, would you, like, to, would you like to tackle that? And I'll, I can pitch in. Thanks, um, Tampidus. Yeah, so, as Rick has already touched on, it is a really key element to this reporting and the whole audit trail so that there's a, hospitals can really demonstrate that there's a, there's an audit trail in place and the space was decontaminated and it's decontaminated with a known technology and it's decontaminated to a calibrated and validated cycle. And the system on, on, the, on the completion of every single process 
auto generates a full report, including who the operator was, which it's picked up from the operator card, and actually sends that up to the nominated email address on, on the trust. And we get a copy of all of those as well. So if there's any faults occurring with the system, they're being reported to us instantly, which is, is, is really key. Not that we're obviously anticipating any, any faults, but it, it, it gives us full visibility of that piece of the process and allows us to, to work with the trust to, to, to monitor that and monitor the efficacy as, as, the, as it goes along. So I hope that that covers off the question. Have you got anything else you want to add yes. to that? Tafi, just... I'll just add to that point. I think what we've seen in a lot of hospitals is what they like about the validated reporting is that you get clarity around who ran the process, what time of day it was run, which location it was run in and what cycle was run. And um, which gives real clarity, a level of clarity that not, can't get any other way. You can't get this with manual cleaning. You can't get this level of clarity or, or validation or assurance any other way. And I think what it also gets used for often is in a root cause analysis situation where you've got a hospital who's trying to uncover some root cause analysis process. In their root cause analysis process, they're trying to uncover some contributory factors to the acquisition of infections. And, and they, so they use this 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 um, this chain of chain of decontamination to see when when was the when was the chain of infection the cross infection of, of patients when was that disrupted and this is a, t a key technology that we can we can hang our hat on as being a disruptive technology in the chain of cross infection good and and just the final thing i want to add be, uh, being an engineer for me the main the main thing is that the process that we ran to get the right level of efficacy when we did the process validation study is exactly the same process that's been run each time the ultra connect or ultra would be deployed so when you press play you basically get that same process and when you get that report into your inbox you know that you every single surface in that area got the right level of uvc light to, to achieve that efficacy and i think that's quite quite key um there's another question saying, has this been used in Australia to date? Uh, Rick, perhaps you can answer that. So Ultra V Connect is a new technology. It's not been used in, in Australia yet. Ultra V, the mobile de device has been used in Australia um, and we've had some excellent feedback on that. Um, I think just to go on the, on, on the, the, the why, why would you choose the Ultra V Connect over Ultra V Mobile? And I think we've seen hospitals and um, it really depends on, on the needs within the, within the environment and the, and the structure of the, of the organization. But we've got one hospital that particularly comes to mind. It's a group of three hospitals. Um, they've purchased one mobile device, which they move between, they move between, um, between the different hospitals. And I think between sites, it's roughly an hour or two hour journey. And the actual typical cycle is a 20 minute cycle. So there's, it kind of starts to become economies of scale where, where you're moving a piece of equipment for two hours to get a 20 minute dis disinfection cycle out of it. And I think that's where Ultra V Connect comes in, where you've got a high throughput environment, where there's a lot of decontamination requirement, there's a lot of risk to patients. That's when the Ultra V Connect comes in. It's a fixed device that you can, can have it in, in built into the environment for, for rapid deployment. Unispace Health is our, is our partner in Australia and, and they'll be, um, they've got a long standing experience in, in the construction and design and build environment. So, um, building this into physical environments is very much um, where, why we've partnered with Unispace Health. And I think it's going to be an important partner for us for us going forward. Thanks, Rick. And I think there was a question to say that are there any benefits to fixed versus mobile? And I think you probably touched on that. But Ian, would you like to add anything about the, the fixed versus mobile UVC system? Yeah, so Rick has touched on them there. Um, I think the key one is, is just the, the ability to really run that decontamination cycle instantly and i think another key one is is what we've touched on in terms of the the calibrated process because these systems are in a fixed location and they're being tested with that environment and calibrated to that environment you know that at the touch of a button you're getting that cycle repeated again and the other one is really the the, the downtime um situation with the mobile device it is a very, very good piece of technology, but you do have to rely on it being moved around around the space and you know having moved to the to the correct location within the hospital, I should say, and relying on you know the, the system being called up to the space. They both have their their benefits, and the mobile device has been used extensively and very successfully, particularly here in the UK, but also in Australia, as we've touched on. So. I think it's really a case of evaluating the situation, which is, 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 is what we were trying very hard to, to work with hospitals to evaluate each particular situation. And we're not 
going to tell you a specific, uh, we're not going to recommend a specific um, technology or a specific application. We're going to look at the situation that you have and rec recommend the most applicable technology to that space. So I think they've, there's, there's benefits on both sides and it's just really about working with you to, to, to understand the situation you have and how we can best apply our technology to your situation. Thanks Ian and that leads into another good question where the one of the listeners is saying can we use this tech with every healthcare environment and are there any limitations? Thanks Thomas. I think that also covers off hopefully this will cover off Lindy Ryan's question in in the chat um, about using it in ED areas, open, open ED areas. So just going straight to Lindy's question, um, and thanks for your question, Lindy, and um, long time no speak. Um, we've, we've designed the system specifically to be controlled and validated within an enclosed space. And enclosed space is, is, is the most important point. We must have a space which is, we can't have people in that space, and we can't have leakage of UVC light. Leakage of UVC light is dangerous, and, um, and, and there's, there's been a a concept banded around that you can pull the curtain around a bed space and, and you'll be fine. That's not that's not true. It's not accurate, um, and it's and it's a dangerous um, proposition. We we've, we've designed a number of screening solutions so we can screen an individual ED bay, um, and and that makes it possible to use in a single ED um, uh, you know space uh, over a single bed space within a bay. Um, our preference would always be to use it in, enclosed, in an enclosed space, like a room with a door um, or a, a, a bay with an open end. If we've got a bay with an open end, we can, the screening solutions become much simpler. Um, so very happy to look at an individual space that you're interested in and, and see how we can, we, can, um, we can design a solution to, solution to fit that best. Um, as far as any environment, I think, I think there's, it's, it's pretty broad statement i think um it'd be fair to say any environment would be would be um acceptable as far as i'm aware right at the moment i think the main thing is to understand what you've got in that space it's not exactly about the walls floors and ceilings if we look at the risk of transmission of infections the walls floors and ceilings present much less of a risk than the equipment does itself so it's so important to understand what equipment is in this space what equipment is likely to be in this space and we've seen um with with some of the robotic disinfection um, technologies um, that you you see around, that there's a real risk that if they don't understand the equipment in the space, that there's there's a there's a disproportionate um, application of the technology, and it's so important to understand and understand that. I can't over over emphasize that enough. Good, Th thanks, Rick. Um, and one one of the viewers is asking whether we have more information about the inefficiency of manual cleaning. Um, and I think we have quite a few case studies that actually are available on our website and we, we're happy to share those after this webinar as well. But mo most of our studies were to show the fact that, you know, the, the, the levels of contamination before the cleaning and after manual cleaning uh, are, are, are lower. However, they're, they're not reduced to the minimum and deploying the UVC light technology was one of the key factors to reduce that to, um, to, to low levels. In fact, we even found... Oh, sorry, Tatis. Go ahead, Rick. No, my favourite study on that subject is a very long debated subject. My favourite study is from a, um, a, a microbiologist in, in the US who um, I'm very happy to share the study because I find it so interesting. Um, the manual cleaning during the day was, um, was there was a level of efficacy which was which was um, kind of the commonly published level of efficacy for, for manual cleaning during the day. In the evenings that level of efficacy dropped significantly and into the night, the night cleaning the level of efficacy um, delivered by cleaners working at night dropped to almost zero. So I think what that shows is that's human behavior and you won't change it, we won't change it. Cleaning is a very important task, very important contribution for our healthcare environments, but it's just so dependent on, on the people that we've got behind the cloth. Um, and and I, we, must, we must have better training, we must have better cleaning materials, we must have um, better resourcing for our cleaning teams, but ultimately we will not ever be able to change the variation that you find in, in human behavior. And, um, and so, so, so long as we've got humans behind the cleaning, there's variation. As, as soon as we reduce technology, there's a level of assurance and reassurance and um, quality that you won't get any other way. Thanks, Rick. Uh, there's one question asking about the, with the room with, uh, with glass, what is the effect on people in the hallway? Um, Your best to speak on this, Tatis. You've um, had long experience with the regulators on this point. Yeah, so UVC light is, is filtered by, 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 by standard glass, so there wouldn't be any UVC light that would be able to go through. 
Oh, this clearly should be, um, I think no less than two millimeter thickness glass would definitely kill, kill, kill the UVC light. Um, and, and as uh, Ian was saying, the, the system is actually fitted with safety sensors. So if somebody would inadvertently walk into the room, it, it, it would cut out. However, obviously the room would be, be set up with, with warning signs. But any of the, uh, any of the people in, in the hallway, uh, provided that there's no actual gaps, uh, should be absolutely fine with, with the glass. Um, I think it's fair to say, Taz, as part of our deployment process, as part of our validation of the cycle, we'll also perform those safety checks before we hand the room over to, to the hospital as, as being a room that's, that's, that's ready, to, ready to use. Good point, Rick. Yeah, so we definitely would test to make sure that the, you know, or any of the glass areas would, would, get, um, would, would get a test to make sure there's no UC light that would be, would be coming through. Um, there was one question, again, is about uh, the, 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 which is the most effective system for cost fix and mobile? Uh, perhaps it's something that Ian wants to answer. Yeah, thanks, Tadley. It's, 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 it's kind of the million dollar question in a certain sense. But on the other hand, I think it, I'd probably like to come back to the point I made earlier as to looking at your application because every application is so different. There would be times when one is a clear winner in, in terms of cost due to the specific way it's going to be used in your hospital and there's other times when the, the other is, is a winner so it, it is really down to that process of understanding what how, how the system is going to be deployed where the risks are and how we can best meet them and i think that probably um ties into a, a further question which which came in as to the systems being how, how effective are they to penetrate past line of sight so we're going to be very, very honest about the limitations of technology, and Rick did touch on this during the webinar. So it does have a line of sight limitation, and it's in that situation where we'd evaluate the actual environment of the room and, and look at which is the most effective system. So it, it's obviously the cost, but there's also looking at how, how best we can treat that particular room and, its, and, and, and the, the particular circumstances of each room. I don't know if that helps on that question. If you want to add anything to that, Rick. No, I think it's, it's good what you said. Um, it's it's um, difficult to give a piece cost exactly. Um, I'm very happy to look at each individual environment. I think the most the most important thing is um, we often see hospitals who say, "Well, I'm under so much time pressure. How can I implement this?" Um, and I think we've seen that the, the, in the in the latest pandemic that we've we've got a um, there's been a real focus of the minds really around cost, time, and the, the cost and time of infection and um, I, I was interesting there was a publication in this this week in the UK about um, patients that are, that are symptomatic in hospital having to remain in hospital for 14 days after they after they've had a, um, a, a, a positive um, swab so you're suddenly bed blocking by 14 days I think there was one in 12 patients was was published and a number was published one in 12 patients uh, COVID patients during the COVID pandemic acquired COVID within the healthcare environment. So the transfer and transmission of infections inside our hospitals hasn't gone away yet. Um, and it's, it's just so important to, to um, control and prevent the, the, the risk of that, that, those infections spreading in, in our healthcare environment. We've got a responsibility towards our patients whilst like, once they come through our front doors to protect them from infection. And I think the cost and time scale associated with infection in hospitals is, is, is unquestioning, unquestionable. Thank you, Rick. So, and that, that leads into another question. Is how best can I get the support of senior management to implement this technology? Yeah, thanks, Taz. I think um, it's, it's always a challenge when you've got um, senior management. We had a, a, a really strong drive in the UK where patient flow kind of trumped everything. Um, and patient flow was, was, was the most important number as how fast we could move patients through our healthcare, healthcare system. Um, and we've seen with the whole pandemic process that that hasn't worked um, there's there's having to be more emphasis on on safe care safe treatment safe health care and um, this isn't about pushing patients through the system as fast as we can um, so I'd, I, I think that the burning question for any senior manager is what is more important is it is it the patient flow or is it the protection of, of, of um, patients from infection and there's a fine balance and I think that's where Ultra V Connect comes in 
um, in the fact that it's a very fast process. If we can highlight the highest risk environments in our, in our hospitals, we had a very interesting study from a, a Dr. Mike Weinbrin in the UK who did a piece of work looking at the role of the ED in the transmission of infection in our hospitals. And what we, we've done a couple of um, interesting projects since using the same data. And in both occasions, we reduced the overall infection um, incidents in the hospital by over 40% by focusing on ED. So I'd say to any hospital that are looking at implementing technology like this, focus on your ED, focus on your, your, your entrance areas, your, 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 your entry areas to your patient care pathways. I think that's the, so, so important as, as Mike Weinbrin um, talks about the, the dirty front doormat, it becomes a dirty front doormat for our hospitals. And, and if it's not clean, it treads into the, into the estate and starts to become an issue within the, within the hospital environment. We spend a lot of time focusing on our, on our clinical space, on our, on our ward spaces. So the, the, you know, the hematology, oncology, um, general clinical medical wards. Um, we spend a lot of time focusing there and we don't spend enough time focusing on the front ends of our hospital, the admission areas, because they're, the, as we say, the, the, the dirty front doormat. Uh, Mike Weinbrin actually is running a, a, a webinar with us hopefully in three weeks time so look forward to anyone that's um, interested in that joining us on that subject because it's a very interesting subject and I think it's got a lot of mileage. Um, back to your point about getting support of senior management I think it's a really we're finding um, that, that most um, forward-thinking organizations are thinking really uh, carefully about how they reduce the risk of infection because it's got so many other knock-on knock -on, um, implications. Excellent. Well, thanks, Rick. And just to say that uh, the, the presentation and this webinar will be available for, 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 for everybody to watch uh, and for people that couldn't attend today. Well, I think that's the, the end of the, the questions. Is there anything else that you, if anyone wants to add at this point before we, before we finish? Just wanted to take one point in Lindy's um, provoking responses here with her questions. So thanks, Lindy. Um, we, we, as far as peer reviewed papers on this particular device, no, we have nothing yet. And um, we've got some, some obviously lab data, which is quite compelling, but there's nothing beats um, some good peer reviewed data. So if anybody that you know, or anybody that you could, um, that, any organizations that's on this, on this webinar today is interested in working with us to generate good local Australian peer reviewed data, we'd love to work with you. Please let us know. Um, and we, we always like to support any academic publications um, because it's so valuable for us and I think for the general scientific community it's so important we have good peer-reviewed data for everything that we're doing. Excellent, thanks. Ian, is there anything else you'd like to say? No, just, just to confirm on the, I think the final question that there will be a, a copy of the recording available for anyone who was unfortunate enough to miss it. Good, and Brendan, is there anything else you'd like to add? No, it's good to have it. Appreciate the um, presentation. It's been very insightful. Excellent. Well, well, well. Thanks everybody for joining. As I said, we've shared. We'll share those slides after. Um, yeah, and we'll we'll meet you in in another while webinar. So look forward to seeing you then. Thank you. All.